As a province on the Pacific coast, seafood is a big part of local dining in BC. From salmon to sea urchins, the seafood from BC is caught in local waters not long before it ends up on our plate. But how exactly do these sea creatures end up on our plates? Different fishing gear types are designed to catch specific species based on their weight and size. Two major industrial gear types, bottom trawling and purse signing, account for 53% of all catches globally. Let's have Tim Cashin, a PhD student in fisheries economics at the University of British Columbia, explain purse signing to us. The way it operates is you have usually one or two boats uh, and you have this long net that you release off the boat and you drag that through the water until you form a circle uh, around like a school of fish. It's like a purse string. You pull it close at one end so that the fish can't escape. And guess what? Purse signing is commonly used here in BC's very own waters. It's used for herring just off the coast here, but it's also used for major tuna fisheries like skipjack tuna and the, the tuna that you'd often buy in cans. Wait, but what about the cod used for fish and chips? How is that caught? By bottom trawling, the most widely used industrial fishing gear type. A large kind of tube shaped net that's held open by steel arms and you drag that along the bottom and then the fish get collected into the net because they can't swim faster than the net. What about the crabs on the coast of BC and the lobsters in the east coast? How do we catch these species? Pots and traps, the largest group of fishing gear. You kind of put it out there and eventually go back and collect it. The traps are designed in such a way that the larger ones are going to have the most problem getting back out. Wait, but what if we catch female crabs or crabs that are too small to be legally caught? Then what? When you pull up a crab trap, you are going to have some that are too small and some that are female that you may have to throw back. I believe the survival rate is quite high. Unfortunately, not all fishes are this lucky. Many dead fish are thrown back into the ocean, which has huge consequences. So here's the big question. How do fishing gear methods impact not only the marine ecosystem, but also the human population? Hmm, 